uncouple your trains almost anywhere. On this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today I've got a little conundrum on my layout. Those of you who have been longtime viewers know that in addition to just running the trains around the layout, I like to operate. I like to do switching. And in this case, in order to do the proper operation I intend to do with my power plant, I need to be able to uncouple cars here so that I can then um, cut loose from them and then drop them off in the siding and vice versa. But this is a curved section of track. Lionel did not make any uncouplers for curved sections of track. Now, luckily, this was a wider radius. This is an 042, which is going to make this easier. But basically, what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to perform a little bit of surgery. So I'm going to take this 6019 and I'm going to uh, do a little surgery, cut the magnet out, insert it here, and have a magnet here. And you'll be able to use this process to put uncoupled wing magnets anywhere on your layout. I have another one, which I'll also show in this video, which is a straight piece of track. However, it is a short piece of straight track, less than a half section, and the track has already been ballasted, and I need to install an uncoupler there. So we'll show that process as well. By the way, this will work not just with the 6019, but also with the later design with the single magnet off to one end as well. So let's get to the workbench and let's get started. Lionel revolutionized the operation of toy trains in 1936 when they introduced remote electronic uncoupling. Early uncouplers use a special five rail track section that could activate a solenoid inside the coupler itself, releasing the knuckle with a spring. By 1948, Lionel had introduced a new magnetic coupler system using a magnet placed between the rails. The magnet pulled a plunger in the coupler, releasing the knuckle. The O-Gage UCS track section and the O27 number 6019 section utilize both rails and magnets so they can operate both types of couplers as well as various operating accessories. From the late 1960s onward, Lionel's O27 uncoupling sections lost their activating rails and used only the offset magnet for uncoupling and unloading. The O-Gage UCS section continued production until as late as 2017. But regardless of type, rail, magnets, or both, Lionel's uncoupling sections were always full sections of O and O27 gauge track, and the firm never made an uncoupler for curved track. This we must do ourselves. While I'm using O27 uncouplers in this video, the concept would also work for regular O track and UCS sections. Also, I'm unsure whether this will work on curves tighter than O42, as the severe curvature of the rail may place the uncoupling magnet out of alignment with the activating plungers on many cars. And yes, Lionel does make uncoupling and activation sections for their fast track system today as well. Okay, so now I'm going to take my rotary tool and I'm going to cut right here where the track starts to flare out for the magnet, right here and right here. And with the rotary tool, safety first, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and let's begin. See, using a screwdriver, I'm going to pry this middle section out. Okay, hold on to that. You're going to need it later. And now I'm going to disconnect the wires underneath, and then I should be able to pull the magnet right out. They leave yourself as much wire as you can to leave myself as much wire as possible. Instead of cutting this wire, I'm going to unsolder it. Go. All right. Salvage good length of wire. Now let's remove the electromagnet. Okay, so there's the guts. Then we're going to reinstall and rewire this in our new piece of track. Okay, and before I go any farther, I am going to uh, save myself some headache later. I'm going to extend uh, these wire leads uh, to make it easier on myself later on.
Meanwhile, back at the layout, I'm going to take the uh, metal piece that I had cut off. I'm going to lay it here on the center rail where I want to install my magnet and take a Sharpie and I'm going to mark the outside of this, but I'm actually going to cut the center rail about a quarter inch closer to the middle on each end. And the reason for that is I'm going to use these little wings to crimp on to the existing center rail to help hold everything in place. So back to our rotary tool and again, safety first, get those masses on. And that's why you wear safety masks. Remove um, that piece of rail and let's test fit. Right like that. We'll have our magnet here and then we're going to crimp our sides down over the existing rail to hold everything in place. Next, let's drill a hole for our wires. And clean up my mess with the shot back. Feed the wires. I'd have cut the rails just a little bit too short, but I'll make it work. Okay, that's the general idea. Now to hold everything in place, I'm probably gonna put just a little dab of some glue on there to hold everything where it's supposed to go, but that will work nicely. Okay, I've got a generic silicone-based glue here. I'm just gonna go around the edges. There we go. Everything's kind of in place. I'm gonna let this uh, dry for about an hour and uh, till it sets up a little bit, and then I'll come back and crimp my tabs onto the center rail. So it is now dry. I'm going to position on the center rail and I'm going to get ready to crimp it into place. And now I use my end numbers to complete the process. Okay. You may find that you need to put a little shim underneath this to keep it from dropping down, but this seems to be in good position. All right, some additional things that I've done. Uh, I did add some solder to both ends, both to ensure electrical continuity through the center rail. Uh, and also just to make sure that this thing is not going to slide back and forth as the train rows over it. Also, I added some ties to help support the rail since this was a, a cut piece and we're, we're missing some stuff. And I did add a small thin wood shim underneath the magnet uh, to get it up to the proper height. So now everything is secure. We're not going anywhere. And it works. Now on this side, even though it is a straight section that I'm putting the uncoupler in, it does present its own challenges. First of all, it is shorter than a half section. I had gotten impatient and had already done some ballasting here. So I want to disturb this as little as possible. So the easy way would be to take one of this style with the single magnet offset and just cut it to length and insert it. But again, um, probably will disturb quite a bit of ballast. So I'm going to try to minimize that by just dealing again with the center rail. And I could cut up one of these, but uh, I have a bunch of 6019s that I got for dirt cheap at a show last year because nobody wants to rewire these things. So I'm going to be using a 6019 instead, just like I did on the curve. And uh, so here we go. This time I cut it out a little wider, uh, keeping these retaining clips that hold the original piece into the mounting bracket. I can use these to better clip on to the center rail, uh, giving myself a better both mechanical and electrical connection. It's the fit. Good. Wires down inside.
Okay, we're now all crimped into place. All right, and we have an uncoupler on a short section now as well. By leaving myself these extra crimp sections, I was able to um, get it down without having to use any adhesive on this one. This one is all mechanically held in place. It is good and firm. So go a little bit wider, leave those tabs in place, and those will help you crimp the track into place. And the most important question, does it work? It does. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and if so, please do the usual like, subscribe, and comment. But before we go, this channel has reached two impressive milestones this week, 6,000 channel subscribers and 1 million total channel views. That's not bad for an old guy playing with trains in his basement. Seriously though, I thank all of you for your support and your willingness to spend your precious time with this channel. Many of you have commented about my lack of personal appearances on these videos, that I've never shown my face. Well, in celebration of these milestones, by popular request, I will now show my face. But I think you're gonna regret it. Okay, here goes. Three, two, one, ta-da! That's me on the left. On my right is my uncle, who some of you Florida residents may know as Tomoka Joe. In the background is Rating Class T1484 number 2101, then in service as AFT number one on the American Freedom Train. So thanks again everyone for watching. I can't wait to see the comments on this one. Until next time, keep the trains running and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.